Seriously, I can drink this stuff? Uh, okay. I hope drinking antifreeze in uh, Planet Crafters is not deadly. Welcome back, everybody, to the Planet Crafter. I'm the Bearded OG, and man, oh man, it's been a long time, <laughs> relatively speaking, uh, since I did uh, the last episode. And the reason for that is because I had a very um, busier than normal work week all last week. I was putting in 14-hour days for a big event that I had to support. And so, yeah, I didn't uh, I, I didn't have time to record Planet Crafter at all, and I, I did have a few pre-recorded episodes of Satisfactory and Valheim, you know, that I was able to still put up, but now we're all caught up. I have no pre-recorded episodes on any series and yeah, we're, we're, we're starting from here. Uh, okay. So yeah, I, it might take me a moment or two to get my head back in the game. So let's see, what are we doing? Uh, I think uh, I want to get started and maybe we will even do this in this episode. I want to get started with the, uh, the warden's quest line. One thing I noticed, though, after I left you guys in the last episode, and this may have happened, uh, or start, I'm sure it did start happening during that episode, but that is that Fred is big. <laughs> Look how big he is now. He's the size of a horse. Hey, buddy. All right. They gave us another genetic trait, too. So, goodness gracious, man. He gets too much bigger than that. He's going to eat me. Okay. Anyway, um, he wouldn't do that to me because I'm the one that feeds him. So yeah, Fred's getting big and, you know, kind of my, my passive plan, if you will, uh, for creatures is you, we'll just kind of make them as we get, you know, the traits for them. And, um, so, okay. It looks like we already have the, this number 10 bioluminescence. In fact, these are exactly the same. So we just need a color A and a color B to make the next critter um and that's not to say that i won't actively uh keep making them too but because i have other things on the to-do list we'll just kind of you know do the animals as as we go uh until and, and or unless i decide okay we need we need more animals and then we'll make them more directly okay so uh oh the other thing i did too was i um I got up to 50 drones now. So after I left you guys in the last episode, I spent some time and just ground out all the materials that I needed to completely fill up the second drone station. So now we have a total of 50 drones working for us. Um, and let's see, we're making we're making cookies. We've got our first cookie there. Look at that. Um, making cookies here. You guys told me. Uh, I'm trying to remember all the comments because, again, it's been a week or so. I think you guys told me that I need to eat this and then it shows up in the thing. Let's... What did that just do? Did that... Did that give us some kind of a buff or something? Oh yeah, increases running speed. Cool, okay. Yeah, so it does give a buff, nice. Alright, so we what we were trying to do... Is have the these be a supply item so i just ate the cookie but i still don't uh, i still don't see it as a supply item so i'm either maybe i misunderstood what that comment was or you lied to me and you're trolling me or something in between those two extremes <laughs> I don't know. I thought I, I'd have to go back and look at the comments, but I thought one of you said if you if you eat the cookie, then it will show up as a supply item. But that is not true because I'm not seeing it here under supply. So, OK. Um, and, and I could be mistaken about that, too. I, I, that's what I thought you said. I'll have to go back and look at the comment, but I'm not going to do that right now. OK, so, yeah. So we're, at this point, we're still, make, you know, uh, semi automating cookies, but I'll have to manually move them over to the rocket. Uh, when the time comes. So you should... Yeah, this thing should be filling up with bee larva. Um, and once it's completely full, then the drone should start taking the extra bee larva and just put them in the shredder. 
Um, so that way these will continue to produce honey for us. Um, let me just make sure. Oh, you need to be supplying. Oh, I forgot to do that, didn't I? Okay, I don't think I... Can I have it supply honey and... Yeah, I can. Okay. Yep. Okay. I forgot to do that. So let's let's set this up. So you need to be supplying bee larvae and supplying honey. Well, you don't... They don't really need to supply honey because the constructor is pulling the honey um, directly. But they do need to be supplying the bee larvae because the drones are picking those up. Oh, yeah. See, look at that. Now they're all coming after them. Okay. Um... Let's just do that okay yeah a little minor detail that uh, I forgot there those first few larvae that that you saw in the uh, bin up there are ones that I manually moved and I, I was looking at it, I was going man it doesn't look like they've they're moving them but now now they obviously are for sure okay cool how are we doing up here uh, we don't have anything. We, that may be the rocket that just came back, though. We're doing good on food. So yeah, I think we're I think we're doing okay over here. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I need to remember to do. Let's go back to the canyon base and let's look at this. Uh, actually, let's look at this. So we are, where is it at? Right here. Terraformation. So we're, we're 2.03. Uh, we have to get to 5 to, you know, to in basically get to the end of the game. So one thing we could do is we could just build more stuff to contribute to the overall TI. Um, but is there something we haven't actually done yet? So we've built the, we got the animal stuff going. Oh, we haven't done a portal generator. We could probably set something, a couple of those up and go do some procedural wrecks in one of these episodes. I Honestly, though, I don't really feel the need to do that. I mean, we could still do it for fun, of course, but um, I guess it would get us more money. But I think you guys said they nerfed the money you get from that. That's not to say it still isn't worth doing, though. We got some decorative things down here. But I think what I would like to do, though is I'd like to go ahead and focus on the Warden's quest line. Because uh, that'll open up the golden butterflies and frogs and that sort of thing for us. Plus, it's fun. And and you guys have told me that they've, you know, there's more to it now than there was the first time I did it. So that alone makes it intriguing. All right, let's take some water with us. Um, let's take a few things of O2 just in case we... Uh, I know that there's one part where we have to go underwater in the Cenote and... It'd be good to have some O2 for that if if we get that far. Um, and then as far as food goes, let's just take a couple extra of those with us too, and let's even top off with those. Since we can get water to drink, you know, out in the wild, I don't need to take a bunch of water with this. And uh, yeah, you know, too. Let's grab even a couple more of those, just just so we have them. All right. So, Warden's quest line. Um, let's go ahead and go to our waterfall location. I haven't even been over here in a long time. You are supplying fertilizer. Oh, well, I guess I told it to supply everything. And you guys are just there to keep feeding the thing. I was going to do a I was going to do a a tier two fertilizer plant add on to this, uh, which we might we might do if we did that. We would need to, we would yeah we just really need a methane production, which is super easy. We already have the algae here, and we would need to plant some squash. So that that would be actually very easy to do. But let's let's not get sidetracked with that today. Um, I wonder, too, if it would behoove us to bring parts for an extra 
a teleporter just in case, you know, if we needed to come back to the base really quick and we're way out in the boondocks. So why don't we do that? Let's pin this. So we're going to need a super rod. We're going to need an Oz. You are demanding this, right? Yeah, okay. We're going to need a Zeo. Checking my overflow bins here. All right, I must have pulled all the Zeo out of overflow. An obsidian and two pulsars. There we go. Okay, so now we have enough to make a an extra thingy. Oh, let's check our, our bank account too, by the way. We are 24. We're just about there, folks. Um, I'm waiting on the living compartment dome. And once we get this, um, then we're, then we're going to do our our home base build, which we're, the plan is to do it over there by the waterfalls, right above the canyon. Looking forward to that. So this is kind of more of our, in, you know, our industrial functional base, whereas that'll be our living base. Okay, fun stuff. Let's go ahead and get rolling here with the Warden quest lines. We're going to go back to the waterfall. And... Let's head on over to the mushroom biome. Uh, to my knowledge, there are three ways to get into the mushroom biome. You can either do it from the way we're going to go. You can get into it from the uh, the meteorite biome. And you can now also get into it from the, um, the lava biome. Which, I don't know if you could... If you were able to do that before, maybe you were and I just missed it, but yeah, I wasn't aware that you could do that until I discovered it myself. Okay, so. Ooh, a thousand Terra tokens. Damn. This is actually all pretty damn good stuff. Um, all right. Well, let's just take it. It's good stuff because, you know, we're coming down here so late in the game, so, you know, it's scaled to our our level and stuff. All right, so this is the very first thing that you, that the player encounters to mine. Well, I, th I think this is how we start the Warden Quest line. It's how I started it the last time I did it anyways. And so for those of you who haven't seen this, this is kind of like the storyline of the game. And so, yeah, let's check it out. We'll open up the Warden's Altar. It has some cords on it. And we have a key here. We'll grab that key. And then uh, I already kind of basically know where to go. But if, if you didn't already know this, in the lower left-hand corner of my screen are coordinates. Uh, so we would basically just follow those, those coordinates there. You know what, though? Now that I think about it, those... These coordinates are actually leading um, 464 minus 4097. Yeah, those are telling you to go to a different place. Uh, well, are they? Maybe not. Maybe this is right. Yeah, it's it's pretty close. Yeah, it, it this is the right place. Okay, um, before we do this, um, there is a golden chest down here, I believe. Yep, right there. Look at that. All right, nice. We'll take that. And there are. I'm pretty sure there's a few more normal chests scattered throughout this biome. Um, since we're getting pretty damn good stuff out of it. Whoop. This is why we brought the stuff along to make one of these. So I can pick all this stuff back as soon as we load up. So let me put all this away and then I'll meet you back there and we'll continue on. Okay, let's uh, just do kind of a quick sweep and look for any uh, more blue chests before we proceed with the quest line. 
I'm not going to look super hard. So if we miss a couple here and there, it's not not that big of a deal. But uh, definitely worth going after these things. This is some good stuff. For sure. Let's go over this way. Um... Where's the entrance to the meteorite zone? Must be over this way further. This biome in particular, probably more than any other biome, really reminds me of Subnautica. Kind of like the underground river um, area in particular. I'm going to have to replay that game at some point. That's such a good game. The first one. The second one, I just couldn't really get into the second one all that much. All right. This is... Oh, that's just the main entrance. Or, or the, uh, the one that leads back out to Waterfall. Okay, let's go around this way. What the hell? Uh, Houston? Oh man, it's like there's an invisible floor up there or something. That was weird. And I guess um I, I thought I heard that pretty sure I heard that they're coming out with the Subnautica 3. Um I don't remember the all the deets on that though. Is there anything by this water wheel down here? Seriously, I can drink this stuff? Uh, okay. I hope drinking antifreeze in uh, Planet Crafters is not deadly. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. I think this is the one that goes out to the meteorite biome. Iron, titanium. Yeah, it is. Okay. So that's uh that's another entrance, and then there is also one that goes into the lava biome. I uh, wonder if that's it over there. Yeah, I'll bet you this is the one that goes into the lava biome. So this is a quite a long passageway, and I actually discovered it coming from the lava biome and not not the other way around but see it comes all the way back into here very cool okay anyway let's get back on track here i know i'm getting sidetracked but this is an exploration episode we haven't had one of those in a while so yeah there's probably let me just do one more quick sweep kind of down the middle here. There's got to be a couple more crates, I would think. But I didn't really pay attention to the center. I went around the edges. That's where we started. And that's the one that goes back out to the waterfall. Anything down here? All right, what about down in here? Aha, there we go. Nice stuff. Okay, we'll take it. All right, that's all we're gonna do. For, uh, in terms of looking for crates. Unless we happen to stumble across another one. There's probably one or two more, but... I think we did pretty good getting the ones that we did get. Yeah, I, I am pretty sure... You guys tell me in the comments, um, if you know, but... I'm pretty sure this wasn't here before 1.0 came out. Because I passed through here several times, and there's just no way I would have missed that. Well, I shouldn't say no way. I mean, it's possible that I missed it, but... It's unlikely that I would have missed it. 
All right, so let's go ahead and put the key in here. And that opens this door. The first time I did this, I was, I was like so um, amazed or surprised because I just totally wasn't expecting, expecting it. You know, this kind of a thing to happen in this game. So it was very cool. All right, so now we go down this little corridor here. And if we go over to here, we have a story. Before we, we have two, two or three stories. I don't know which, maybe this is the first one. Well, let's just start with this one. After all those years, all the suffering, we decided to leave our home soil, to go as far away as possible and build a new home, far from the terror, far from the strife, far from them, to stay hidden and live our lives as we had for centuries. We carefully chose somewhere we could be safe, gathered the last of our kind in our biggest vessel, and on a fateful night, we left, fleeing their never-ending insatiability more than themselves. Fleeing their never-ending insatiability more than themselves. What does that mean? <laughs> um, I guess they're talking about the people they were fleeing from. They were insatiable. Oh, they, okay. I think it means they were fleeing from the the fact that they were so insatiable even more than just the people themselves, which still kind of seems one and the same to me, but whatever. Okay. We were struck by the resemblance at first. We were almost exactly the same. Our scientists told us it was because our celestial bodies were identical in every way, so our evolution, while independent, was very similar. It was like meeting a cousin you never knew you had. They even called us brothers. When they started to land on th uh, thre tre Treha, a few spaceships turned into dozens and slowly our worries grew. Our main differences were hidden deep inside. Biologically, we were identical, but our minds had been shaped differently. By fate or by nature, the fact is that when we realized it, it was already too late. So this is actually, I think, the first part of the message. So apparently they had a, a race of somebody um, invade their planet, take over their planet, and the, the this message over here is them escaping from them. All right, we have another key here with another set of coordinates. And um, I do believe I know where those coordinates are. 964, 68, 70, 44. So we'll go do that after we're finished here. All right, so once you read those two messages, then you come down this corridor into this huge cavern, and you see there the warden's, I guess that's their ship somehow in this cavern, but there's no way to get to it. If you bail off the end of this, it's lights out. So this is just eye candy. There's nothing you can do with it as far as I, I'm aware. But it's very cool, though. It's like, what the hell is going on here when you see it for the first time? All right, cool. So we have learned that these people called the Wardens are a race uh, or were a race of celestial beings, beings with celestial bodies. And their homeworld was invaded by other beings that were biologically the same as them, but thought differently and apparently overran ran them and they... Um, uh, so, so they left, and they came to this planet and settled. That's what we know so far. All right, what we're going to do now is we're going to put our thing... Whoop. Cut it out. Don't be doing that. Stop it. Um, We're going to go back to... Well... No, actually, I don't want to do that. I want to take this with me. Um, So I'm trying to think... We need to go waterfall. Yeah, let's go out. Let's go out this way. Into the meteorite biome. For some strange reason, this biome's the sky always stays black here. And I, as you can see, I haven't even looted in this place. Um, we've hardly been over here since I started this, this particular playthrough. All right, let's put the iron in there and I want the solar quartz. The rest of that stuff's not super important. So we, we need to go by our base anyway to get to the next area. So, um, I'm just going to stop off there and drop a few things off and then 
I'll meet you guys at that next spot. Which is, if you already know, the Super Alloy Cave. Yes, I know. I should have just gone back out to the waterfall and taken the teleporter back. But that didn't occur to me until I was halfway here. So we took the scenic route. Sue me. All right, we are at the fusion cell production facility. And where we want to go is just right up here. To the uh, super alloy cave. And here we go. Next area. It's very golden here. Once we get in here a little ways, it disables our jetpack, and then we have to go on foot. So yeah, again, the very first time you discover this, it's like it's really cool. It's like, wow, this is crazy. Coming to another cavern here with a new key take that key and uh, I think we which way did we go yeah it come um is that wait is that right I mean it is right but did we miss another leg too No, this is the way we came down. Then we went left to get the key. And now we go right. Okay. A little bit of a maze. There's another don't want to fall down in there area. Look at this place, man. This is cool. So they built a little city in here. And we have a second key. All right, now I have to remember what to do. I think we have to climb. I've only done this once before, so. Yeah, we, and you can't use your jetpack, like I mentioned. Do we go in here? Hmm, does not appear to be anything in here. Uh. Oh, it's gonna say, let me out! Can we climb this? Mm -mm. I guess we parkour up this thing then. There's stairs. Never mind. <laughs> we have stairs. Okay. So we go this way. Yeah. Okay. I remember this now. Just go up the catwalks. Do we need to be careful though? Because we, it disables our jetpack for some contrived reason. I don't know. Maybe, maybe there's celestial technology that causes it not to work or something. Let's just say that's what it is. Okay, there's another story thing and another corridor. Let's go do the story thing first. Orbital drainage defense uh, defense device observation log. <clears throat> the device is working as intended and our tests are conclusive. If the ones calling themselves humans ever approach this planet, it will drain their ships of energy and prevent them from communicating. Our pre, uh, presupp presupposition is that the device will effectively reduce their efforts to approach this part of the infinitude, leading them to spread elsewhere, if they continue to do so. Our calculations are conclusive. This will give us at least a few hundred years of quietude. All right, so basically what they're saying is that they put up a, a defense thing that, that screws um, with ships, drains their energy, um, and wipes out their communications. So... Um, 
And it's also implying that humans uh, were the ones that invaded their original planet. Um, even though humans are not celestial beings. So I'm not sure how that jives, but that seems to be what it's implying. All right, before we continue on that way, let's go down here. All right, yeah. So I think this is supposed to be the the power core for the for the defense system. It kind of, if you look at it closely, though, it kind of looks like it could be the globe of the planet. Maybe I don't know. It doesn't really tell us though. But we can't, you know, we can't interact with it in any way. Cool. All right. So it's it's just kind of a fun little story. It's not super fleshed out. It leaves a couple of things for you to kind of just suppose on your own, but it's fun. Okay. And we have our third key and the coordinates, which I already know where they are. Whoa, that was weird. A little bit of a parkour action there. Okay, and I and that is it for this section. So now we're just going to have to head on back out. I'm not going to jump down there because that's that would hurt. So I'll see you guys at the next location because we didn't really gather anything to go back to the base to put away. The next location, by the way, is over by our food farm. All right, let's head to the food farm here. And uh, let's just eat a food right now just to top off. And uh, where we're going is... Just kind of right up this way. Up into the cliffs. Is it this spot here? There we go. All right. We got enough bank to... Gosh, look at all this stuff. That's nice. To make our living quarters. So that's probably what we're going to do in the next episode. What was that? A Fiorente butterfly larva. Cool. There we go. I was just over a little too far. All right, let's put all of the keys in. It's kind of cool how they're like cogs. All right, let's go. Our jetpack's gonna, yep, it's gonna fail right here. And we come back to the valley, the Paradise Valley, the Hidden Valley. Very pretty. See, I used a, a similar screenshot the last time I did this. So I think we'll do something different for that. But yeah. Oh, here we go. So let's grab that key. And um, I believe we have to get another set of three keys. Um, this doesn't go anywhere, right? Or does it? Oh, that's where we just were. All 
I think I think I tried to go up here the last time too and it didn't it dead ends right here. Yeah, I don't really see anywhere else to go here. Where does this go? Doesn't really appear to go anywhere special. Let's drink some frog water. Hey, we drank antifreeze earlier, so... If we can handle that, we can handle frog water. Okay, so we got that one key. Let's go up to the left here. That's not going to go anywhere. This way. It's really pretty here. Second key. All right, nice. Can't really do anything up there. I don't know if we can cheese our way over to the other side from here or not. Le looks like we can, at least in part. Uh, there's the other key down there, actually. Alright, then where does this go? Oh, maybe we need four keys. The water wheel still works. That's cool. There's a climbing vine. Before we climb it, though, let's just go look over here real quick. See if there's anything to see. Not really. All right, let's climb up the vine. Ah, there we go. There's the third key. That's a spectacular view, isn't it? With the planet in the background. Um, why don't we just take a quick screeny, just in case, and actually, I don't want that up there. I wish that would, I wish it would remove that for the screenshots. Okay. Climb back down, and we'll go get that fourth key. This was the way we were supposed to come, but I cheated a little bit. Whoa. Just about jumped over the top of that. Alright, so now we have four keys. Let's go down here. And up here. into the main building. Oh, you want five keys. Okay, we gotta find another key. Alright, we'll wait to read that after we find the fifth key. Hmm, okay, so where's that sucker at? Let's go... Let's go look over here. Did we... Oh, there it is. There it is, okay in a more obvious spot than I was thinking. There we go. All right, let's read this. Once we lived. All right. But no more, apparently. And we have the golden butterflies. Look at that. That'll make a nice screenshot. Um... 
Let's do it right about here. Yeah, I can't really get the top of the dome and everything down on the bottom either. That's fine. Let's do one like this. Okay. Hope I have room for all this stuff. Once again, a calamity befalls our people. If the predictions are correct, a meteor will hit the planet in just a few days. The cities we built, the splendors we created, will fall. Our arts, traditions, discoveries, and lives will vanish. Once again, destruction is upon us, but this time we will not flee as we did generations ago. What is the point of running away when demise chases you so vigorously? We accept our fate, are proud of what we were, and remain true to our values. Our story will disappear under the ashes of flames and dust. Like a butterfly life, beautiful and evanescent, it's time to meet our end. That's kind of sad. Okay. I don't... I didn't notice anything new or different from the first time I did this. Um, so, yeah. Let me know what it was that was new or different about this time than the last time. There's the golden butterfly larva. We have two of them. 1,500%. Uh, all right, we're not going to have room for all of this stuff, so I'd like to keep the golden flowers, but we don't necessarily need Pestera Seed or Shanga Seed. Um, I want the Tier 3 and the Tier 4 Muties for sure. I don't know if I have that effigy, so we'll take it for decoration for our house for later. We don't need any food seeds. We will take these rods. And that leaves us with two slots left. Um, kind of doesn't really matter, to be honest. I guess we'll take a mushroom seed and uh, we can make lerma seed now so that it's no longer as valuable as it normally would be. And we'll take a, a bean seed because why the hell not? <clears throat> Actually, here, let's take, let's put, uh, here, let's eat one of these. We'll take the other bean seed. Okay, cool. Um, are we also... Maybe we can make golden frogs from one of these larvae. This is cool looking in here. All right, guys. Well, that is the Warden quest line. Now, there is also, if you watched my season one playthrough of this game, which was my very first time playing through the game, um, right at the very, ooh, I want that. Right at the very end, I discovered the Cenote. But we never really, I, I went down and got underwater, got myself in trouble and, and basically drowned. <laughs> Um, so, and it seemed to me like there were, was more warden stuff down under there. And there was also some more story for, I believe it was Iklas, if that's how you pronounce his name. So we're going to go check that out too, but I think we'll do that in the next episode just because I don't think we have time to do that in this episode. So the plan for the next episode is to go do that and then... Uh, whether we get started with it in the next episode or the one after that, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to build our home over the water uh, waterfall canyon. And uh, looking forward to that. It's going to be really cool. Uh, so with that being said, I'm going to let you guys go here. Thank you very much for watching. hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share out the video, and we'll catch you all in the next episode. Bye-bye. What's in here? I think we already checked that. I'll get it later.